Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Thanks for having me. Um, it's uh, allergy season, but I got some hot tea and tea here. So uh, uh, bear with me. And um, so uh, uh, my, my real interest is in uh, oh, the pointer is a little hard to see is, uh, is stone calendars. I'll tell you a little bit about it. And so this is one of many sidetracks uh, uh, from the program. And I think I'll probably be back at some point to talk a little bit more about the uh, Stone Calendar project. Uh, another interesting, I, I sort of threw this slide in about a, an hour ago, is uh, I thought I would uh, introduce my background a little bit. I was, I was born in Venezuela, uh, raised in South America. Uh, my parents uh, would uh, drag us through the jungles and the rivers and the deserts and uh, my mom was an avid, uh, uh, had an avid interest in archaeology, and so she knew all the archaeologists, and so we'd go out to digs on the weekends. And so uh, my roots are in New Mexico. I got here as soon as I could, which was in my 30s. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, doing some research, uh, my seventh great-grandfather was Francisco Montes Vigil, who came north from Zacatecas, uh, in, uh, 16, what was that? 1695, I think it was, uh, he eventually uh, became a captain in the Presidio. And, uh, some of you might recognize this is the Segasor painting that's in the museum. And he was, uh, uh, actually, uh, at that massacre. He was out of the 30 Spaniards. I think he was, there's two, two reports uh seven survived or 11 survived and so he was one of the survivors and uh this is a little drawing that uh, came from the internet somebody drew here and so it's a it's an interesting painting uh to take a look at so he was a a uh they called them the the leather troops the sol uh, soldados de cuera and uh on my on my grandmother's side uh uh, she was a, my third great grandmother uh, was a, a, a Chihana de Apache. And so I'm, uh, I'm from the um, uh, Rodriguez, uh, Francesca Rodriguez Mitchell clan of the Chihana de Apache. And uh, my, this is a map of, of DNA. I'm pretty much a mutt <laughs> with a little bit from all over the world. And so I'm interested in, oh, an interesting thing is even though uh, it's an Apache band. The DNA is a B2A, which is uh, a Pueblo and roots. And so if there's anybody here who uh, does DNA analysis, uh, let me know. I'm interested in probing that uh, a little bit more. And um, a little bit about the Stone Calendar Project. What we do is we study how indigenous cultures use the sun's position uh, the, the sun's arc that it takes across the sky, it changes every single day. Uh, but we're sort of out of tune with that. Uh, the only time it doesn't change is when it gets to the uh, 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 winter and summer solstice positions. It's stationary for a couple of days. And so these, these light and shadow uh, images uh, will change from one day to the next. And uh, these are examples of what we believe are calendars. And so this is sort of the main objective here. And, uh, and so we broadly study these uh, throughout the uh, Southwest oops, in various cultures. Um, you know, uh, we, we see them in the Mogollon, uh, Ancestral Pueblon, Fremont. Uh, we, we see them out here in the desert, uh, Patayan culture, Sanawa Hohokam. We've been down to, um, uh, uh, along the coast in uh, uh, Mexico here, um, down into Casas Grandes, uh, kind of off the map uh, into uh, the Rio Fuerte area. And so they, there seems to be a uh, uh, similar techniques that are used. And uh, I'll talk a little bit later about a trip to Peru. And um, in, these, in these studies, of course, there's been a lot of of population uh, mobility. Oops, I'll get this down yet. There we go. Uh, 
in the southwest over the last uh, a thousand years or so. And this this plot here comes from it used to be called the uh, Coalescence Communities GIS database. Um, and this is the distribution of population around 1200. Uh, this is what it looked like uh, the uh, uh, time when the Spanish uh, came around. I have a little video here that probably won't work since we converted it to PDF. Oh, I better not do that. Help me out, Shelby. Oh, there we go. Um, and so uh, uh, the the video would show a steady progress of these population centers slowly moving south and eventually uh, um, uh, moving off of the map. And these are the uh, Puebloan cultures that were around in the 1500s. There were other populations uh, down south here, probably remnants of the um, of the Hohokam. Uh, and so we need to, when we're doing these studies, we need to make sure that we take into account that the populations were moving uh, significantly during this period. Um, I can't quite get it. Okay, let me just go there. Uh, and so the objective of the study, this was just a, 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 a little sidetrack, was to understand the cultural connections to the calendars. As I go through these uh, serpent images, you'll see that they varied slightly from culture to culture. When we're studying the calendars, of course, we're looking at spirals and sun images, and we really can't tell, you know, one spiral from another, uh, you know, that we've crossed the cultural boundary. But studying the serpents uh, helps us do that, and it helps us trace these these uh, these migrants as they moved around uh, in studying their calendars. Uh, another interest is kind of probe a little bit the origins of the crested serpent tradition. You know, where does this come from? Uh, and then understand a little bit about the the evolution and uh, a, a spread of this tradition. Uh, of course, down here, it, uh, you know, it's very strong. This is probably the origins uh, of the, uh, I would say, the plume serpent. Uh, uh, Yucatan is over here, very strong presence there. The highlands in Mexico. There's the antlered serpents that uh, that occur uh, over here in Baja. Uh, the Mississippian culture has its uh, uh, own winged serpents, and then I'll be, I'll be talking about the Southwest. Uh, we were in Peru in uh, um, September and uh, found this rather interesting uh, uh, serpent. Uh, it's got little horns on it, and we found some others. And so and so this serpent, uh, this crested serpent uh is is probably prevalent up and down uh, the americas and a lot of scholars have suggested an, an, a northward diffusion of the mesoamerican plume serpent that perhaps came up into the southwest uh what we do on the stone calendar project is is we study uh these types of panels here uh many of these uh are loaded with uh complex imagery um the the panels that are uh, uh, Pueblo four and later, say thirteen hundred and on, uh, there's a there's a continuity in culture, and so uh, Native Americans have identified uh, religious iconography, mythology, um, clans, uh, uh, ceremonies, historical events, and so on. What what we're interested in doing is sort of pulling out just the the astronomical information that's embedded uh, in here. Uh, however, there is a, a, a lot that we do not uh, understand uh, from these calendars. This particular one is a is a pre-1300 uh, uh, panel. Uh, this is the uh, image that that started the study. Uh, the uh, Hopi tribe asked me to come out oh, about a decade ago and give a talk on our calendar study. And then they immediately directed the CPO director to get, get me a permit to come out there and work with them and identify their calendars. They said they have a very strong uh, oral tradition. And so uh, up on uh, uh, Antelope Mesa, we, we ran across uh, this image here. 
And working with uh, a number of the guides there, I said, well, that's not a Hopi serpent. And I said, well, explain this to me and I'll show you. Uh, and so here's a here's a rock art image of a Hopi serpent. I'll show you some paintings. Uh, it has a kind of a rounded snout. It has a single horn and it has plumes. And there's very specific markings on this that define it as the Hopi Pa'alulukong. And so the tradition is that, um, uh, in fact, they call this a, a, an Eastern Rio Grande uh, serpent. And, uh, and the tradition has been that the settlements on uh, Antelope Mesa, uh, Kawaika, uh, on down to Owatavi, uh, were uh, eastern uh, uh, pueblos, and of course we see a, a rock art that uh, image that goes along with that. And so the the plumed and horned serpent uh, image around the southwest uh, varies quite a bit. Uh, here's a Hopi contemporary art. You can see the single horn. You can see the plumes. Uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, Kiva murals. You'll notice some of the horns uh, project forward, some of the horns project uh, backwards. We see it on the ceramics, uh, and then we see it in uh, uh, three-dimensional ceramic uh, effigies. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna start up here and just kind of uh, move on down. Uh, this, this green here sort of represents the area in which uh, I have found uh, uh, various crested serpents. In some cases, we're not sure if it's horned or plumed or what it is, but it's got something on its head. And uh, and so this seems to be the, the general region of where this tradition is. And of course, it goes further down into uh, uh, Mexico also. Um, also talked about way down here in Baja, California. I'm not covering those. And then of course, over here um, in the Mississippian culture, uh, they have their own also. And um, so so up in the uh, Four Corners region, uh, south southeast U Utah, uh, there's a number of images in the Barrier Canyon style. Uh, this one here is in the San Rafael Swell. Uh, not quite sure if this is BCS or, or Fremont in origin. Uh, you see a lot of uh, Barrier Canyon style uh, handling serpents. This one here has a little uh, a plume or something coming off of its head. You see a lot of uh, in individual serpents. These are believed to be quite old, thousands of years uh, BC. Um, Marvin, have you done dating of these? In uh, and so I know I've seen I've seen some. In fact, here's a reference right here that some are as old as uh, eight thousand years old. Uh, I think it's uh, it's it's safe to say it, it's uh, probably a few thousand BC, but exactly how old, we're not quite sure. Uh, this is another panel, um, uh, Sago Canyon. Uh, this again is a Barrier Canyon style. You can see here uh, 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 um, an anthro. Uh, it looks like he's handling a serpent. You can see the uh, horns on the serpent. Uh, here's another one, uh, looks like a, a single horned serpent. Uh, this is in, in the swell. This looks like uh, maybe it's a flying serpent. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell if there's really something on his head or not. Uh, this one here has sort of a serpent body, but more of a sheep-like head and maybe some hands. And um, another early uh, uh, style is, uh, is in the Grand, uh, Glen Canyon linear. Uh, this particular one is in, uh, Chevalon Canyon. And so again, these images are believed to be archaic, uh, uh, quite old. Uh, there are two images right here that look like there's, you know, serpents, uh, of some kind. They've got some kind of projections coming out of their head. Maybe they're mandibles, maybe they're their uh, horns, it's not quite sure. Uh, and and Marvin, th these are the ones that we're, we're interested in associating with the soot dating uh, that we're doing. See if we can add a little bit more information. Uh, again, I think these are assessed to be, you know, a thousand years uh, BC, not sure how early. Uh, there are some sandals that were found in a nearby shelter that are uh, radiocarbon dated to 8,300 years old. 
And so uh, a, a question I'll put out to people here uh, down in the uh, bottom there in the red is what additional archaic sites might there be? Uh, in October, we were exploring some of the Esplanade uh, polychrome sites in a remote region of the of the Grand Canyon. Did not see any uh, crested serpent sites there. I haven't been to uh, uh, the Pecos to, to look at the, some of the Shumala uh, sites, but it, it would be interesting to see, well, how far back do these go and are there uh, additional archaic sites? In the same region overlapping uh, BCS, but uh, much later in time is the Fremont culture. And so you see some uh, continuity in the designs uh, between the two. You can see the spiral, this, the serpent uh, emerging from the spiral. Uh, this looks like what we would call horns. Not quite sure uh, what this is, but we see uh, uh, some similarities in style and uh, within the same region. Uh, in Nine Mile Canyon, uh, there's quite a few serpents. Uh, we, again, uh, these are all uh, petroglyphs here. We see the um, serpent emerging out of the spiral here. We see uh, this uh, double-ended uh, 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 serpent here. Uh, here. Here we can see uh, maybe this is a, a crested serpent of some kind. It's been repatinated. It's probably uh, uh, quite a bit older. Uh, we see different variations of of crested serpents uh, throughout the Fremont uh, rock art, and so there's a there's a fairly strong tradition uh, of this in in Fremont. Uh, in the nearby region, uh, we we see this in uh, a basket maker, uh, uh, maybe early Pueblo. Uh, it's hard to tell really in this uh, pictograph here uh, whether there's a crest on there uh, or not. What's really interesting is the lack of this tradition in the Mesa Verde area. And so uh, I had a poster at the Southwest Symposium in, in 2020 in Tempe and uh, I wish I'd written his name down. Somebody came up and said, well, you know, in my 40 years of working at Mesa Verde, I've never seen a crested serpent either in the rock art or in the ceramics or in any of the plastered uh, murals. And um, and so that is really interesting because it it seems as though that tradition does not really come from this region here. And you can see there's a lot of, of archaeological sites there. Uh, I've explored some of the sites and uh, you can see in this image here. Yeah, you know, maybe that's a serpent. Uh, this one here. Uh, this is a, a petroglyph at the Isme panel. So, you know, there, there might be a, f a few in there, but certainly that tradition is not there like it was in the BCS and certainly not like it was in, in Fremont. And the, in the Fremont tradition, it's very strongly expressed. And, um, uh, and so I've sort of talked about this region here. And uh, and of course, uh, the, the lack of that tradition uh, in the Mesa Verde area. And so now I'll, I'll, I'll move down into Hopi and and uh, uh, further areas of. Um, let me see again. This is a video um, half over Yeah. Uh, that uh, I can't show. But this is a this is a really interesting three dimensional effigy. It's at the. Uh, it's in the uh, uh, Chaco collections at the at the Hibben Center. Uh, it came from Una Vida. There's no direct date associated with it, but they believe it's a it's about a thousand A.D. And so it's got what what appears to be nice clear horns, a nice snout, big eyes, uh, and uh, and and teeth on that. And we'll see a continuity of of that type of style uh, later on when we when we move into Hopi. Um, this tradition is uh, a very strong in their contemporary paintings. In fact, I think in the in the OAS bulletin, Melissa, you you put a a, a Hopi painting, right? And uh, and so this is a a turn of the century uh, a publication from Fuchs. And if you and if you look at the Paolo Kong body, you'll see uh, the marks of the Paolo Kong. And so. Even at Hopi, if there's no head on it, if you just see a serpent body and you see these markings, they will tell you that's the Pa'alulukong. 
And uh, but the tradition is again a uh, a single horn uh, with a combination of of plumes. <clears throat> Here are some others uh, from the same uh, uh, turn of the century uh, uh, Fuchs uh, publication. Uh, we see this in the rock art. Uh, showing you this one. Uh, this one here just has a small little horn. Uh, this one has a little bit larger horn, but again, you can see the sign of the uh, of the Pa'alulukong uh, here and here. Uh, and there are uh, other rock art images that sort of match uh, the the current uh, contemporary. And uh, and of course, we talked about um, the the strong art tradition. Um, in this one here, uh, again, you can see the single horn and plumes. Uh, I'll talk about some of the other serpents that have uh, body adornments on it, but you see this tail ending in a, in a cloud terrace here. And we see that common, uh, in this part, uh, around here. Uh, moving on, uh, and Zuni has a similar uh, tradition. Uh, this is the Zuni Kuluisi. It has a small a little blue horn here. It's got a combination of plumes and fur. And again, it also has uh, his own marking that, that signifies, uh, identifies him as the Kuluisi. Uh, there are some uh, legends associated with the, with the floods uh, at Zuni. Uh, you see it in uh, some of the older paintings. Again, this small horn, uh, the plumes here, and the uh, 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 traditional markings uh, identifying uh, the serpent there. You see it in the, in the three-dimensional uh, ceramics and uh, in the uh, carved fetish there. This is a, a really interesting one. Stumbled across this by accident. Uh, and somebody said, well, hey, have you seen our serpent? And so uh, this is a carved serpent. The serpent head there is probably about this big around. And um, the, it, it, it came in sections. And uh, there's another section. And uh, this thing used to stand about six feet tall. Uh, it's carved out of sandstone. Um, you can see there's something that was embedded uh, in the head here. You can see the neck is recessed. And uh, this is a painting that was done by, I think it was a, a Robert uh, Yellow Horse. And he seems to have used this uh, as his model. Now here he's incorporated plumes in there and a, and a, a mosaic collar. Uh, so this, was a, this is a very unique, uh, interesting one. I think the only one I know of like this in the Southwest. Uh, and uh, that particular one is, is located uh, right about in this area. So I'm going to jump over into Northern New Mexico here. Uh, and um, uh, of course the Avanyu is, is uh, very strongly expressed in the ceramics, uh, in the paintings, in the, in the folk tales, uh, in the legends. Um, one of the things that we see here is I'll, I'll call this a tassel uh, for lack of, a, of a, another term. We also see these, um, I'll, I'll call these winglets that I'm not quite sure uh, what it is, but we also see the, the backward sweeping horn as well as the forward sweeping horn. Uh, Mesa Prieta has a, uh, a, a long time a petroglyph recording project. Uh, they've been at it for over over 15 years. They've recorded on the order of 60,000 images. And, and so uh, looking at their database, they estimate that there's about 800 serpents uh, on the Mesa Prieta Preserve. Um, and about 95% of these are, are the double horned and a small percentage of them uh, are the single horn. Uh, on the Pajarito Plateau, uh, this is near uh, the Pueblo of Sirgue, uh, uh, up in Los Alamos. Uh, this is uh, at uh, uh, Puye Cliffs. Uh, strong expression, the same in the Galisteo Basin. We see the single horned and uh, the double horned. Um, 
here we see uh, uh, this is from uh, uh, Pueblo Blanco uh, sketch here. Here we can see the uh, a terrace tail attached to the serpent, and we see a lot of that uh, on the on the uh, Pajarito Plateau, La Bajada area. Different styles, White Rock Canyon, very strongly expressed uh, there also. And uh, and then uh, as you as you go up into the Rio Grande, you find them. But as you get up into the Taos area, I don't know that I have found any up in that uh, area of Taos. Um, and so in this in this region here, uh, I call it the sort of the, the heartland of the Tewa. If you take a look at uh, White Rock Canyon and the Hamas Mountains and Petroglyph National Monument, I'll include in there, Galisteo Basin, Santa Fe Canyon, Pajarito. I mean, there, there are thousands of them in this small little area here. And so I think in the area of study, it's probably the strongly, the most strongly expressed uh, tradition um, that we see uh, here. And uh, moving moving south, uh, so from this region, I'm going to start moving south uh, uh, towards the uh, border here at the uh, uh, Pottery Mound. Uh, I've tried on most of my slides to uh, put my references down there, and uh, so feel free to ask about them. This this comes from uh, 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 Hibbins' uh, publication. There's a there's a clear presence of both plumes and horns. And so here you can see a forward uh, a sweeping horn and plumes. Here you see a backward uh, sweeping uh, horn. Uh, this mosaic uh, collar we'll see uh, uh, later on uh, showing up very strong in the uh, uh, poly uh, or in the Ramos uh, polychrome. Uh, we see body accents uh, on here. Uh, we see uh, this is an interesting we see this merging of a serpent uh, 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 with a human being. And uh, and so we'll also see uh, additional examples of that. Um, this is in uh, Tanabo and this is uh, Cerro Las Lunas. Uh, uh, both of these uh, appear to be uh, warriors that are confronting uh, the serpent. Uh, this one appears to be a single horn. Uh, I'll, I'll show you some details of the head configuration, slightly different than the other ones we see up, up north. And again, you see these sort of uh, winglets coming off, uh, these uh, 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 body accents, maybe some circles on here. The Cerro Las Lunas, um, you see a collar of some kind, and here you see the uh, 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 terrace tail. Uh, and and there, there is a uh, an, an Isleta uh, uh, myth about the twins fighting the serpent. And so it might be that this is possibly uh, a depiction of that. I think it's the only ones that I've seen where there is a warrior confronting the serpent. If you guys have anything to add, just uh, uh, jump in. Uh, nearby are these uh, twin serpents uh, uh, from Tanabo. Head styles kind of slightly different. Uh, this one looks like a single horn. Uh, this, this one looks like it has a snout uh, on it. But again, you see these little winglets uh, on the side and you can see these uh, body decorations. Yes. How, how tall is that? Oh, maybe <laughs> six feet, John, six feet tall. Yeah. And uh, so you can see some some you know differences uh, uh, in in the head styles. This is a a pictograph in the in the same area. Um, it looks like it you know sort of a round small head uh, like these, uh, a, a single horn, and perhaps uh, some plumes coming out here, something coming out uh, of of his mouth here. And so you can see some similarities uh, and some differences. Uh, again, this one appears to have a single horn. Not quite sure what these are. Maybe they're meant to be plumes, or maybe they're ears. Uh, not not quite sure. Uh, there's a there's an overhang at uh, a, a bow, and this is what the raw photo looks like. And this is sort of my attempt at digitally and uh, putting on an overlay. 
but you can see these little red uh, winglets here. You can see these this uh, uh, body accents very similar to the Pottery Mound murals. As hard as I could, I just could not pull off a uh, a, a face uh, or a head uh, of the serpent uh, from that image there. Moving further south um, uh, towards Roswell, uh, there's a, uh, uh, a, a structure that was found that has a, a, a plastered wall. And uh, here's, a, here's a photograph. Uh, uh, you can sort of see the white outline. Uh, here's a drawing of what they believe to be a serpent. You can see the teeth, not quite sure what's got, you know, some kind of a blunt feature on the head. Uh, this is uh, uh, my attempt at, at putting the original colors uh, that they were able to find. Uh, and so it looks like it's a, a, a crested serpent of some kind. Oh, I might mention that there was actually another wall. Uh, and so both of these serpents are actually facing each other. Uh, but the serpent on the other wall was even more deteriorated uh, than this one here. This is a really interesting reference. Um, Lay Powell uh, was telling me about this and I had to look it up. And so out here in the panhandle of Texas, um, it, uh, near the Canadian River, there's a spring called Rocky Dell. And this is an image of it. And this is from uh, uh, Forrest Kirkland's book. And uh, it's 13 foot long and it's got these two horns. What's really interesting is in 1853, uh, uh, Whipple with the U.S. Uh, Cavalry was there and he ran across uh, Pueblo Indians that were out on the plains uh, hunting buffalo. And the Pueblo identified this uh, as the guardian of the water source. Uh, they called it the great water snake. And uh, it's, it's there to give rain and to protect uh, those who pray to him. And, uh, and so it appears as though the Pueblo Indians uh, took this image and, and brought it out to an important site uh, where, they, where they got water. And of course, this is 180 miles from Pecos, which was probably the nearest Pueblo. And so this kind of shows you uh, the ability of transporting and taking uh, your own uh, uh, imagery uh, to various places. Uh, if we if we uh, hop across the Rio Grande into Mimbris, um, there's a, a a firm ceramic tradition of uh, of a forward uh, arching horn. Uh, interesting uh, merging of of the human and the and the serpent. Um, and I'll show you. Uh, I've not encountered much in in Mimbris rock art. Uh, if people have, uh, let me know. What's interesting in this one here is this little tassel uh, that we see on the horn. And so we, we see that in the, in the contemporary uh, Tewa uh, serpents. And um, uh, this, is, this is an image from, uh, the lower image here is from frying pan uh, a site. And uh, it's got kind of a long body, but it's got maybe some hands and an arm. Uh, human face uh, and a uh, arched cap. Um, it's you know not your traditional uh, uh, serpent, so it's hard to say. Uh, but I think this is this is an image worth tracking down. I haven't been to this site here. Uh, this is a pictograph in a in a remote canyon uh, uh, called Benito. It's off the uh, uh, Gila Narrows, and um, and it at a and there's a Membrous uh, ceramics found nearby, and it looks as though this is a cloud terrace uh, with multiple rainbows. We see that in the Hornada, and possibly a a two horned uh, serpent there. And so it'd be good to go in there sometime and uh, uh, try to destretch that and see if we could uh, uh, study that one a little bit a little bit more. Um, near Ruidoso is uh, is this serpent here. Uh, here's the photograph, and this is the de-stretched uh, image. Uh, there's there's a there's a crack here, and right at the base of the crack is a spring. Uh, I should say the remnant of a spring uh, doesn't really run all the time, uh, and so this appears to be emerging from the uh, from the crack. 
It's got a nice big prominent horn, uh, more of your typical square snout. And if you look closely, you can see some fangs, the, uh, the big eye. And what's really interesting is, again, we see this hassle pattern here. Uh, this is this is a uh, 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 a Tewa serpent uh, from uh, Hawaii, and uh, and so if you if you if you destretch it, it is somewhat reminiscent of of these types of tassels here, and so maybe there is a connection between those. Don't really know. Uh, Alamo Mountain is uh, further south. It's along the uh, Texas, uh, New Mexico border, just inside of New Mexico. Uh, you can see a, a single horn there, a slightly different, uh, sort of a triangular shaped, maybe with a horn. Uh, here we see a, a, a nice horn. Uh, we see we see some body adornment uh, uh, on these that we don't see in uh, other places. <clears throat> Uh, in the in the Hornada Mogion, uh, there's there are lots of these, uh, very strong uh, uh, expression. Uh, you know, Fuselman Canyon, Trans Mountain Road, uh, and other areas uh, have these. And so, in the I would say in the southern uh, Hornada, uh, this uh, tradition seems to be uh, expressed uh, uh, quite well. Uh, a little bit further south, this is Alamo Canyon and, and Waco Tanks. Uh, slightly different, a uh, huge horn. Both of these have been uh, enhanced. And what appears to be maybe, you know, plumes or something like that. On this image here, again, you can see the big horn coming right out of the top of his head and very similar style uh, uh, plumage. And uh, I think these are the only two. They're fairly close to each other. Uh, that that have this uh, huge horn type uh, of a style. What's what's also interesting is the is the is the lack of this horn serpent tradition at Three Rivers. We see a couple of of them. You know, you see some backward curling, but of course this could be associated with uh, with with bighorn sheep. But the forward curling one. Uh, especially with a serpent body, this is probably uh, the most definitive one. Uh, here's one that has this kind of serpentine body with a head and horns, but yeah, this is not your your conventional crested serpent uh, that that we're used to seeing. Uh, perhaps this is a double ended serpent with horns, uh, but you know, most of us have been down to three rivers and seen the very detailed and 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 there are other serpents there uh, that are greatly decorated, but they're not crested serpents. And so it's rather interesting that there is a strong tradition north of here, south of here, and to the west of there. but but why is it not at three rivers? I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh, jumping back over into the Arizona, New Mexico uh, a border region, um, uh, 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 people have studied the uh, uh, Salado uh, uh, polychrome, and you see these images here that, that looks like a head, an eye, and, uh, and, a, and a backward curl here. You see it there. Um, the, this is an image out of uh, uh, Patricia Crown's book, uh, the, uh, the Salado Polychrome. And she mentions in her book that the image that is most commonly seen on all of these are these faces here, which are interpreted uh, uh, to be uh, crested um, serpent head images. And they come in a variety of styles. If you're ever in Safford, Arizona, be sure to, to uh, go to the university there and see the collection. It's just a fabulous collection. Mm -hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of, of pots there. Uh, Safford, Safford, Arizona. Yeah, if, if, you, if you find yourself lost in Safford, <laughs> there's something to do there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's off the beaten path, all right. Um, uh, if you find yourself out in the middle of nowhere, you're getting close to Safford, <laughs> off the Gila River. Um, this is 
there's an interesting serpent style here at a place called Secret uh, Mountain, uh, Arizona, which is uh, not too far from Sedona. And I think this is the only region where these types of serpents exist. Uh, there are these serpents that have a little fantail uh, uh, on there. I, I, I don't think this, this fantailed tradition has survived into any of the, uh, any of the modern tribes uh, that are there. Um, but, you know, maybe this is a different form of a, uh, it's certainly not crested on the head as we're used to seeing. Uh, however, there are traditions in, in Mesoamerica where you do see this. And uh, so uh, this is, uh, uh, this is at uh, uh, Xochicalco, and you can see the uh, plumes on the tail here. And so you do see this in um, in areas of of Mesoamerica, uh, and so maybe this is a representation of a different uh, form of of the of the serpent deity. I don't really know, and since we don't have any surviving cultures that use that, it's kind of hard to uh, make that inference there. Uh, we've been down into Casas Grandes and studied the calendars there and, and the rock art sites. Uh, yeah, this kind of looks like a bird. Uh, this one sort of looks like a bird. This one's a little more convincing. It's got a little bit of a serpentine body. It's got the square snout like we see further north, uh, the big eye and this uh, uh, horn here. Um, but we've been to other places like Piedra Pim. Pintada, Rio Fuerte, Mayo, Trincheras, uh, and not found any on the uh, on the coast side, uh, up in the mountains uh, in the Sierra uh, Madres, we find these. A very strong ceramic tradition uh, in the uh, Ramos polychrome. Uh, most of these are of the of the two horned uh, type. Um, some of them have fangs. Uh, most of them have this uh, mosaic collar. Uh, there's one that I found uh, 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 a photograph, and uh, it's in uh, uh, what I uh, can't quite read. You know that uh, collection there, and that one appears to have a single forward horn, and then these backward uh, uh, plumes. And so this is this is a rollout of of that vessel. And so here you can see uh, possibly a, a single horn and plumes coming back uh, and then uh, uh, body uh, decorations. And so it appears as though maybe they have that same tradition here, but I would say there are hundreds of these that have the two horned. And oh. the only one I've seen uh, with the combination is, is this one here. What's interesting is there are um, distinct regions uh, where there are a, a combination of plumes and horns. And so uh, within this dotted region here, we see uh, the, the contemporary Hopi, we see it in their ancestral rock art. Uh, it's, it's with the, with the Zuni. I talked about the uh, uh, ceramics here. And so there, there seems to be a combination of horns and plumes. Uh, and as we go further south, too, it talked about uh, 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 this region in the uh, southern Hornada and then and then around uh, uh, Pakime also. When you get north of here, uh, it appears to be a, a strictly horned. Uh, down in this region, of course, we have a combination of, of horned uh, and plumed. And uh, and so one can't discount the fact that, you know, perhaps the horned tradition uh, originated up here in some of the early cultures. Uh, we see that uh, 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 continuity in the um, um, uh, basket maker, early Pueblo, Fremont. Uh, we see it at, at Chaco here, and then this strong tradition still alive uh, in that region. Uh, another interesting finding just by accident is the, the, the lack of any kind of crested serpents over in the ball court region. So outlined in blue here is generally the region where the ball courts are found. And there's on the order of 200 uh, ball courts in that area. 
this is a photograph of the northernmost one at Wupatki. Uh, I think this one's at uh, Snake Town, uh, an artist's uh, 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 rendition. And so we just don't find it uh, over here. There is a little bit of an overlap with this bulge from the uh, Salado polychrome, but that comes later in time. Uh, it's not uh, contemporaneous uh, uh, with the Balcourt cultures. And so, uh, you know, we've studied rock art up in this area and from here to Hopi as the crow flies, maybe it's 60 to 80 miles. Uh, you, you find a strong tradition here, but none. Uh, in this region here, uh, Wupatki, Winona, Chavez Pass. Uh, we've studied rock art in the Chavez Pass area, Sun Valley, Gila Bend, all the way out into the lower Gila here. And so the the tradition uh, just did not seem to exist there, which is which is really interesting because I always associated ball courts and crested serpents with with Mesoamerican cultures. And so the question is, well, why are they not here? Uh, in fact, one might ask the question, why, do, why are there ball courts here, but we don't have ball courts up and down the Rio Grande? And so there's probably a separate, you know, uh, a, a diffusion of tradition that comes up on the coast. And again, going down the coast here, uh, you know, we've gone down as far as 600 miles from the border, uh, studying rock art sites and, and never found them uh, in this region here. I might mention Aaron Wright from Archaeology Southwest has also done a similar region in the Hohokam region. And, and he's come up with the same conclusion I have. And that is, yeah, the tradition for some reason is just not expressed. It's not in the ceramics. It's not in the rock art. Um, we've both found uh, a few little scratches down over here in Tucson. It's like, yeah, well, maybe those are, maybe they aren't. Uh, but nothing you know, near the tradition that we see uh, in this area here with lots of ceramics and lots of rock art. Uh, I've been studying uh, Mesoamerican codices uh, 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 mostly for uh, these little events depicted here that's a, 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 an eclipse. Uh, and But it's interesting to look at some of the similarities and differences in the uh, uh, serpents since a number of people have postulated uh, this is a diffusion from uh, Mesoamerica. And so we see, uh, uh, you know, we see these uh, 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 body accents here. We see them uh, in some of the serpents here. Um, most of the serpents in the Maya area seem to have a kind of a snout, uh, fangs. I'll show you some uh, 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 from a recent trip. They have sort of a crest of some kind. Some of them have plumes on them and winglets. Some of them don't. Um, uh, you, you can see the the strong tradition in the Southwest, uh, you know, of this collar. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell what that is, but but we do see body adornments of various kinds uh, on the serpents. Uh, we see this handling of of serpents. Uh, you know, back you know thousands of years uh, 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 BC uh, up to the uh, uh, contemporary uh, uh, snake dances, we see it in the rock art or in the uh, murals uh, in Mesoamerica. Also, we see this merging of of humans and serpents in the in the in the Maya area. We see it up up here in the southwest. Uh, and this is a, a really interesting uh, uh, imagery here. At Pottery Mound, we see this serpent. Uh, it looks like he's consuming a man uh, by his head. And then we also see this in a number of Mesoamerican uh, uh, codices. Uh, this is an Aztec one. Uh, I think this, is, this might be Zapotec. I'm not too sure. But again, we see this. Uh, and it's interesting to think about, well, you know, what does that uh, designate and, and and the meaning of that? Is it related to the meaning of this? And so is there any kind of a religious connection uh, that is, is, is brought forth uh, with this? Um, so if we if we take a look at the timeline here, you know, the, the Barrier Canyon style uh, is, is clearly a couple thousand years uh, 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 B.C., we see that strong tradition up here. We see it in the basket maker. Uh, we see it in Fremont up in this region here. 
We don't see it in the Hohokam. We don't see it in the Sanawa uh, in these regions here. Uh, we don't see it in the uh, uh, Patayan, but of course they're not uh, uh, Puebloan. Uh, and as shown in yellow here is the horned only tradition. And in the blue, we see this combination of, of plumes uh, and horns. Uh, and I, I think the earliest uh, uh, classic uh, uh, Maya carving uh, from the Olmec tradition occurs about in this time frame. And so it appears as though, you know, up in, in, in the Four Corners region uh, with the archaic cultures, this was already here uh, probably as the Olmec uh, culture was being formed. And so uh, that suggests that, that, that maybe these horned serpents that existed very early up here uh, are, are really indigenous here. And perhaps the, the plume serpent uh, or the plumed addition uh, might be a Mesoamerican uh, uh, influence. And so again, we see very strong horned uh, uh, and very strong horned uh, tradition uh, still here. This is the region uh, where we see a combination. We see some down here, the absence of it in the ball courts. And so, and so maybe there's a, a, a several types of diffusion uh, mechanisms, cultural diffusion mechanisms that are uh, going on. Uh, and so as this uh, uh, down below here states, uh, uh, maybe uh, further investigations further south uh, uh, would be fun. Um, we were down in Peru in September. Our, our goal was really, if you, if you take a look at these calendars here, and you take a look at these types of images here, uh, it just sort of begs to go down there to see if we can find uh, similar calendars. Uh, and so we were down there in September and sure enough, uh, uh, we did. Um, but what's interesting are the, are the crested serpents uh, that we ran across. And so, uh, uh, and, and so these are along the coast of, of uh, northern Peru. We landed in Lima. We spent a week up in the highlands. Uh, and then we spent uh, 10 days uh, uh, driving up to various sites up and down the coast. I, I showed you this one at the uh, uh, early. Here's another rock art of, a, of a, possibly a serpent uh, with some kind of a crest on its image. At, uh, at this site, there is a, another one that looks uh, very much like this one, but the crest is pointed forward instead of backwards, as you see it here. But you see it in the rock art, you see it in the ornaments, uh, it, you see it in these plastered murals, and, and you see it uh, in, in hundreds of ceramics. And so at least in the Moche uh, culture in this region, uh, it was a very strong tradition. We don't see it up in the highlands uh, 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 in the uh, Inca cultures. Uh, just got back from the Yucatan uh, about a week and a half ago. And, uh, and so that was fun uh, studying the serpents there. Uh, there seems to be a strong tradition of fangs here. And so uh, here's a combination of some of my sketches and photographs, but uh, you know they all seem to have these these pronounced fangs. Sometimes they're a little hard to see, but you you can see them here. Uh, they all they they seem to have a crest of some kind on their head. It might just look like this, like maybe an iguana. Um, a lot of them have body plumes, as you can see from this sketch here. Uh, and then uh, this one here, I can't quite see it, but uh, it's it, it's covered with um, a plumage. Uh, some of these have rattles. Uh, there's one that uh, possibly has horns or ears, and that's this one here. And so it's got these two little projections on its head. Uh, it's it's the only one that I know of down there. Uh, but uh, uh, I, you know, there's there's still plenty of other serpents to go chasing <laughs> all around Mexico and the Southwest. And, uh, uh, and so, and the study's gotten out of hand anyway. So at this point, I'll go ahead and stop it. And uh, if you guys, if you guys have any uh, comments, questions, uh, suggestions, ideas, uh, go ahead and bring them out. And uh, yes. Early on, maybe 20, you had a picture of the serpents coming out of or attached to spirals. I 
have a chance to see if those spirals are calendar? Um, I'd have to go back and review my notes, but I think the 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 one Fremont one that has the horns, I think it I think that one is where I showed the Fremont one and the BCS side by side. I I believe that one is. So, John. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing the results of your extensive research. One of the uh, items that you showed was uh, early on was serpent with a a, uh, a forward bending horn, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like most of the examples have the back bending horn. Well, or in the Galisteo, I think they're predominantly forward. <laughs> Yeah, it interests me because I've always had this question in the back of my mind. Is there any particular significance mm -hmm. or cultural tradition represented by whether the horn is going forward or backward? Not that I know of, but we could make something up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, things like that, I sort of, uh, uh, for I, I love giving these presentations to, um, various tribal members because i think those are the ones to ask right i mean this is this is their this is their tradition this is their their religion and background and uh but i don't think i've asked that question yeah so yeah i i don't i don't know why yeah so oh the calendar project um we're studying uh petroglyphs and light and shadow interaction to understand how they were used as calendars. And so I'll, I'll give a talk in the next few months here uh, on that project too. So, yes. Well, in the <clears throat> Mesoamerican tradition, doom serpents is talked about as the bringer of civilization and the bringer of the calendar, the sacred calendar, to six days. Mm -hmm. And you show the modern that was from the Kodosu. Now that raises the question up here in the Southwest, is there any evidence of the symbolism of the 260-day sacred calendar? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I think what would be interesting is to go down into Mesoamerica and march forward, northward, and see what is the furthest northern extent that that exists, um, but I, I, I'm not aware of any 260 day, yeah, calendar up here in the Southwest. I'll say, um, and I'm not aware of anybody else who, who has assessed that. Okay, so, but it, it's a good question. I mean, it's so strong in Mesoamerica, right? It's so strongly embedded. Yeah. Why has that not come come north? Don't know. Yeah. So. Um I the this the, the question was at the secret mountain sites. There is a plumed horned serpent associated with the winter solstice. Uh, have I seen that? Uh, so I've been to those sites and I've uh, studied a lot of those sites. Um, I have not seen anything there that I would call a horned serpent. Although people have told me, go see the horned serpent. And I've gone and that one's not horned. <laughs> um, similarly, around the Wupatki area, which is, which is, which is, as I said, uh, about maybe 60 to 80 miles from Hopi, people have said, oh, I found a serpent there, you know, crested, well, I go there and it's like, well, that's really not a horned serpent or a plumed serpent. And, uh, but uh, to answer the online question, uh, I think I've seen that serpent, um, but I, I have not seen any any serpents that really have a head crest on them in the secret mountain area. So,
the, the, the question was what? In, information exchange? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so I've I've uh, I've given this talk to uh, a, a couple of uh, pueblos uh, up here. Um, I think the thing that they find most interesting about the talk is that I think that the origin of the horn serpent is really local in the Southwest. That it really because it goes so far back in time. Uh, and I think that resonates with them. They say, well, you know, we always knew that, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's one of the, uh, interesting remarks, uh, from them. Well, we always knew that it came from here. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Yes. Have you looked at the, uh, uh, it's been quite a few years since I was at Teotihuacan. My uh, objective back then wasn't to study them, um, but there are so many cool sites in Mexico to go study, right? Mm -hmm. Teotihuacan is one of them. And uh, so... Um, yeah, I, I'm aware of, of the sites. I've seen them a couple of times, but that was uh, decades ago. And uh, so it's another excuse for another trip. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Well, city uh, overcome in late 500s, and that temple probably being built 200 years before that. Those huge figures. Uh, now, are these the 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 heads that are sticking out of the? Uh, okay, yeah, I'd have to go back take a look at those. I mean, they they look more dragon like, right? I mean, it's a mythical beast, so you could, you know, um, it, yeah. And and I don't know that I've seen a tail associated with those, right? Yeah, I mean, if now it now it at at uh, at Chichen Itza. Uh, you know, you, you, you can see the, the plumed, you know, body coming down and terminating in a head. Right. And so then you can infer that, oh, okay, that is a serpent, right? Uh, at the, at the pyramids, you're, you're talking about Teotihuacan. I, I, I don't recall a serpent body attached to him, no, but, uh, like... just a head sticking out. Yeah. 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 The, they yeah, the the big eyed the uh, guy, yeah, the cloud lock like. like you mentioned Chicken Nitsa back forty years ago, forty five years ago, before the deep dust period. Mm -hmm. You could drive up in your Jeep, and you could still see the murals in the Temple of Warriors, and those mm -hmm. murals show a Quetzalcoatl with no horns. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, eating people who are thought to be the miners that when the Toltecs came in late 900s, uh, they defeated them and they were supported mm -hmm. by Quetzalcoatl, which is a little different image than uh, from the water guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. The last time I was in Yucatan was 40 years ago, too. Mm. Holy smokes, the changes. <laughs> it was a dirt parking lot, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, yeah, and the Temple of the Warriors was closed off. And, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, I was just down there last month. Oh, yeah. Okay. Last month it was closed off. Yeah. And uh, so. Yeah. And so at, 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 at Chichen Itza, you see a very strong... I'll call it uh, Mexican Highlands influence, right? Mm -hmm. And them bringing their own version of it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and so I think, I think, you know, as people have migrated or conquered and moved around, you know, the victors take their imagery with them, right? Mm -hmm. And superimpose it on there. Yeah, so, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The same thing we're talking about in the Southwest. 
Well, the, the, as, I, as, you, as I showed you here, the, the version in the Southwest, I mean, Quetzalcoatl, I think is, and, and correct me, anybody is, is really an Aztec deity. The Yucatan deity is, is a uh, Kukulkan. The Quiche Maya have a different, you know, uh, and so Quetzalcoatl, I think is an Aztec. It's a, it's a Nahua, Nahua, uh, a name. Yeah. And so I should say maybe not Aztec, but maybe Nahua. And, uh, and so I think what we're seeing is different versions uh, of that. The question is just how related are they? Right. And uh, so. The first one is a handful of your images showed a double-headed serpent. Is there any particular? Um, let me see. Did you have a something to add about the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get back, back to that. The comment that the, the worship of a of a serpent is not limited to Native America. Uh, I mean, you you have the aborigines in Australia that have the big creator god is the rainbow serpent. You find it, the oldest piece of art in the world is supposed to be a big uh, serpent in a cave in, uh, in Norwegia or in Zimbabwe. So it's a, it's a global phenomenon, including, of course, it's a one. Uh oh, I lost my pointer here, Shelley. Oh, and the uh, and the question online was one about um, double headed serpents. Yeah, so um, so there we we do we do find it in the rock art. Um, there there are double headed uh, serpents. Oh, thank you. There are double headed serpents uh, that we see in the rock art. Um, I don't know if there's any seen in murals. I don't know if there's any painted in ceramics, um, but in in Mesoamerica, you see the the double headed serpent a lot in the murals, uh, and so what the significance of that is, I don't know, uh, except it's just a a, a local tradition, and. Um, Yes. On the, a couple of images you had, you, you showed, uh, you said a warrior fighting the serpent. And um, I, I, I don't, I've never heard of that. Uh, that, that. That wouldn't happen if they're on the same level. Mm -hmm. It would be either um, firing the the power from the serpent mm -hmm. instead of fighting the instead of challenging the the serpent. And then you had another image of uh, you said another serpent in Texas where these guys were uh, going buffalo mm hunting. -hmm. And that image is is a buffalo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's recorded by the lieutenant who said that the Pueblo Indians he encountered there. That's what they told him. And that was, was a, a ways from Pecos. Yeah, 100, 180 miles from Pecos. Yeah, yeah. And, and the same image is, is, is from Pecos. Uh, I'm from Hames. Oh, okay. So Pecos Ashes. Yeah. And that's the, that's the, the, the bull. You, you would interpret that as a different uh, a, a different image. Yeah. As a bull. Yeah. No, but, yeah. Did you say uh, there was a horn? Serpent. Oh, there's a lot of images in, in Pecos with uh, serpents. We're going to try the date. Back to your uh, a point about, you know, the uh, the serpent imagery uh, being fairly wide. I mean. Yeah, it's. I mean, you 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 see the uh, the antlered serpents here. We talked about these serpents. You Thank bet. You. Uh, you know the the Mississippian cultures, Mesoamerica, and so it 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 
and and these are crested serpents and so it just might be that this this ideology is embedded way 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 back in time right and it still persists but there's slight variations of it as as populations have lived isolated from each other for thousands of years they've developed their own tradition and uh so yeah we'll call it a wrap okay thanks <clears throat>